Tuesday, the 10th of December. This is Business Morning with me, Bosin Namafaye. I welcome our viewers here in Nigeria and around the world. Let's get the show started. This is our Tuesday business briefing. The countdown to year rent 2019 is already on, but President Buhari continues to retool his administration. Yesterday, he rejigged the country's public finance sector, replacing the head of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Babatunde Fowler with Muhammad Nami and launched what he called an open treasury portal system. These are two very important actions on Monday, which signaled the beginning of the business week. Well, let's uh, drill down on the first part of that, which is the new open treasury portal. And of course, if you're on social media, you've seen what it is. But they just summarize it for you. And what is President Buhari trying to achieve? The new system, uh, which is basically a financial reporting portal, requires the country's accountant general or the accountant general of the Federation and all accounting officers of the government to publish every day how much they spend in as long as that money is in the region of 10 million naira. In other words, henceforth, any spending by any accounting officer of the federal government of Nigeria and the accountant general must be reported daily on the portal. Number two, all ministries, departments, and agencies must also report on a daily basis any spending that is five, that is above five million naira. That would also become public. But also becoming public is what you call the new financial transparency policy and portal. Now, this financial transparency reporting portal requires that all MDAs publish their quarterly and full-year financial statements. In other words, we talk about companies listed on the stock exchange reporting their quarterly numbers and their full-year reports. President Ob Buhari now says all MDAs, agencies of government, must report the same way companies quoted on the stock exchange do. In other words, from January to March, they must publish what their financial statement is. And at the end of the year, all of them must also report on this portal or this system what their financial statement for the year really is. This is what we call shining the light in the dark. But remember that last week, December the 5th, one of the world's high largest rating agencies, Moody's Investor Services, reported that Nigeria has very weak institutions and governance strength, and in particular, poor public finance management. The rating agency says only a durable and significant increase in non oil revenue would improve Nigeria's resilience to oil price volatility and provide scope for the government's ambitious spending plans on large infrastructure projects. Moody's report went on to say last week that governance factors are a material driver of the rating of Nigeria's economic outlook from stable to negative last week and said that's captured in the assessment of Nigeria's institutions and governance strength. In conclusion, Moody says last week that institution capacities remain limited and the management of public resources remain opaque and lacking in effectiveness. Is this report that has instigated what President Buhari has just done? Let's bring in Justin Chuku, who is an economist, a public policy analyst, and the CEO at Carry Asset Management, to talk to us on this and a few other issues. Good morning. And it's good to have you on the program, Johnson. Good morning. Thank you, Bosin, for having me. Thank you. This is, give us your initial thoughts on these latest moves by President Buhari, starting first with the Open Transparency Financial Reporting Portal. Um, Bosin, when I looked at what Wazir Ado tweeted on the Open uh, Treasury uh, tra uh, uh, Financial Transparency System, that if, uh, President Buhari launched yesterday, I was quite excited. The reasons are one, in fact, I actually went to that portal to check whether what they have presented is what they have, what we have there. And I realized that if you go there, you will actually see payments of five million and above by each of the ministries, agencies, and departments of the government. And the, the most important thing is that you don't just see the amount that was paid, you see the beneficiary, you see the purpose, 
you see the relevant ministry, agency, or department. And for me, that is the height of transparency. Um, beyond that, the ministry, agency, or department, the MDAs, will now be required to publish their monthly expenditures and revenues, their uh, monthly budget performance, the quarterly financial reports, and the annual financial reports, just like we have for public companies. And those publications must be in line with international public sector accounting standards. So there has to be some level of uniformity in that public, those publications. So for me, there's no Nigerian who will say, OK, I don't know what the government is doing. And I pray that the state governments and local governments will also adopt that so that as citizens, we can hold government accountable for the use of our resources. We can also see whether we're, they're actually achieving value for money in their expenditure. Johnson, I'm sure you remember a couple of years ago, financial, the Financial Reporting Council, the FRC, published what you call the Code of Corporate Governance for Public and Private Sector. It was a two-part document in which the former Executive Secretary of the Financial Reporting Council actually said in that report, or put it together by the committee in that report, that public companies in Nigeria, like the NNPC, the Customs, Nigerian Port Authority, uh, including financial reporting uh, uh, of uh, Federal Inland Revenue Service, should make their financial statements public. That report was thrown in the water. He was removed from opposition, uh, from office, and then we heard nothing about it. Now, President Buhari is here and now opening up the public finance. Just last week, as you already know, Moody's identified poor public finance management in Nigeria as one of the biggest problems that the administration or that the country has. Do you think that this is what you called at the stock market on dressing in public? Well, there are slight, the, some slight differences between um, what you called uh, transparency and public uh, sector financial management. Transparency is that whatever you have done, you make it open to the public. Uh, in terms of financial management, what you're looking is value for money. What you are looking for, are you really de uh, deploying the resources of the state to the most to the optimal or use or the most important or most critical sector that will bring value to the society? Uh, so if you look at um, uh, financial management, which is what Moody is referring to, they are obviously referring to some instances where resources are not deployed in the most optimal form. And uh, it does not necessarily refer to the openness of those uh, deployments. I'll give you an instance. Uh, the investment we are making, the amount we are spending on um, subsidizing petroleum products, that is PMS or fuel, will be considered by Modi as financial recklessness or some level of uh, poor financial management. Well, as the declaration of the amount we are spending and how much we spend on subsidy every month is transparency. So you could actually have transparency without having effective financial management. So there are two slightly two different things. Transparency is important, which is what the president is pushing for. Uh, it helps nudge those in public service to move towards effectiveness on the deployment of assets. It also gives us an opportunity to look at what the resources are, our resources are being deployed in, and then we can actually advise or criticize such deployment where we think it's up, not optimal. So the transparency will give us a window to know what's going on, and then we will now push for more effectiveness in deployment of financial resources. Moody is talking about effectiveness or efficiency in financial management, well as what the president has pushed for, which is commendable in, in, any, in any case, is that of transparency, openness in the administration of public sector resources. Uh, transparency and openness, they go together. Uh, Johnson, I'm sure uh, you agree with that. So uh, you need to be open and you need to be transparent. Now, this is what you called disclosure. If we use the market balance there, uh, I'm sure you know. So Mr. President is pulling, pushing now for what you called disclosure for payments by the accountant general, all accounting officers. That is on one side. But now let's uh, talk a little bit further about the quarterly and full year reporting by MDAs. Okay, if you look at the quarterly reporting, one you have to look at your you have to report your revenues and expenditures in the quarter. You also have to report your achievements of your budget target, which will also make it easy for us to measure achievements of budget. And ideally, this should be the parameter for which 
the heads of these NDAs to be measured or assessed or, uh, or the performance uh, reports prepared. Similarly, ministers and uh, departmental heads should also be assessed based on one, the achievement of the budget specified in the financial year, two, and effectiveness in the deployment of resources. So the quarterly report will even make it easy for the government, for the bureaucracy, to easily assess those who are doing their jobs and those who are not doing their jobs. When we have the budget that will be signed into law, most likely for the WCA, uh, that's the 2020 budget, so you have the measurable target. So the next question is that at the end of the first quarter, we should be able to see the reports of the MDAs and measure them against the budget that has been uh, cut for them. And uh, now be able to hold the ministers responsible or accountable to the extent to which they achieve the budget. The reality is that if you don't measure anything, you can't achieve it. Now, with this level of transparency and openness, we as citizens are in a better position, are better equipped, or have been given the tools to hold those who are in public service accountable for the use of our resources. Johnson, you said you went on this portal yesterday as it was launched on behalf of Mr. President, and you said you saw the payments made, made public, who paid what and who gets what or who receives it. So the government says anyone who does business with the government, if you're a contractor, you supply to toilet paper or tea and coffee, and the amount is uh, in the figure of five million naira, that will be published on this portal. Yes, I went, I went through the portal and I, I went to payments made in November. And I can tell you, I've been stuck payment for broadcast uh, equipment that was bought for MT, uh, uh, Nigeria Television Authority. I saw payment remittances to pension for administrators for Ministry of Works. I saw a lot of things which I'm not at liberty to start mentioning here, but it's open to the public. The, the, the reality is that you can now the point to say, look, if you have any doubts about those figures, I mean, with the, uh, um, um, the Freedom of Information Bill, you can actually make further inquiries. But what I saw there actually was gladdening to me because for the first time, I could see all the government transactions I wanted to see. I just looked at the November 2019 figure because I wanted to be sure they are up to date. And I was quite afraid that the November figures are up to date. Um, it, it's a very large uh, file. You have to go to the Department of Interest to your Minister of Interest to you. But um, there you could see figures from 5 million and above. And they, we are detailed enough to say what purpose the payment was made for and who was the beneficiary of that payment, and which relevant ministry or department was accountable for making that payment. So yesterday, Mr. President chose the same day to change the leadership at the Federal Inland Revenue Service. Where do you think President Buhari is going with all this that he's doing? Do you have any idea? Well, um, you know, change is a, a permanent thing. Um, some were expecting that Sunday Fala will be, uh, they will renew his mandate, uh, but that did not come to be. And we have another person who is now the shadow with the uh, role of leading the Federal Inland Revenue Service to higher heights. I mean, we've seen a lot of achievements in the past four years. We've seen FIRS grow their revenue to 5.32 trillion naira last year. And uh, we are hoping that the incoming uh, chairman of the Inland Revenue Service would further grow that. I mean, if you look at the figure that uh, the outgoing FRS uh, chairman uh, presented to us, he was projecting to make about $8 trillion in 2019. I don't know what they have, where they've gotten to on that uh, target. But in any case, we've seen progressive growth, and uh, we should expect that some of the reforms that were implemented by the Fowler's uh, regime will be continued or further enhanced by Muhammad Naimi. Uh, well, the, the leadership change at the FRS wasn't just about the chairman, but the board as well. So, uh, do you, do you th where do you think Mr. President is going here? Uh, I mean, in the corporate world where you operate, when, for example, if it's a quoted company, there's a change of managing director or CEO or the chairman of the company, well, that's okay. But if you change the chairman and you change the board as well, it means you're not just cutting it at the surface, you're going deep. So how deep do you think President Buhari is going as far as the FRS leadership change is concerned, not just the change of the chairman? Yeah, you know, Boston, you know, the board of uh, FRS is a standard appointment. So 
So um, I think it's a five years tenor uh, job um, or four years tenor job. So what, what happens is that um, at the expiration of the tenor, they they have to renew their tenor or new board will be constituted. I think that's what the president did. Uh, he did not renew the tenor of any of the board members. So he's bringing in new uh, people with new ideas, new energies. We hope that the new people will also have the grit and the knowledge and the the drive that the algorithm board uh, brought into the to the job and that grew our tax revenue to 5.3 uh, three trillion naira in 2018. Uh, so, but it's for me, uh, like I mentioned earlier, change is a permanent thing. Uh, we don't worry about change. For me, who is in a very volatile sector of the economy, uh, what why, what we look for is when you have a change, you ask, would that change be better than the previous experience? And uh, we hope that. Every new uh, person that comes will come with fresh ideas, uh, will drive the, uh, the service to a higher level. If you remember, we had a time when there was an Nayaju there as the chairman of Federal Inland Revenue Service. Then after him, there was uh, Ifeoku, and now we have Tindis Fowler. And uh, between Ifeoku and Tindis Fowler, we've seen a lot of improvement in uh, management of our tax uh, um, uh, revenue. Not only tax revenue, in terms of tax generation or the tax revenue generation, we've seen a material improvement. We've seen a level of automation. We've seen instances where the last chairman introduced a voluntary uh, asset and revenue declaration um, that will allow people to go and declare their uh, assets or revenues and then expose themselves to um, save assessment. We've seen uh, automation in the tax system. I hope that the new board that is coming in with the new chairman we further expand those uh, and then make the payment of taxes and tax assessment seamless and less cumbersome. Uh, Johnson, as we continue to wrap it up, uh, President Buhari or the government in particular had come under very serious uh, pressure or knocks over the last one week or so from the World Bank Nigeria Economic Update to the Moody's Investor Services Rating reports and the downgrade of Nigeria's uh, stable outlook to negative. So do you think what President Buhari is doing now is in response to this? But then, take it to market state for me. Um, John saying, how do you think the market, investors, home and abroad, should take these moves, fiscal reforms or public finance reforms that President Buhari is doing? Well, I think uh, for the start, the open treasury management system that is being introduced is quite commendable. I believe um, both local and foreign investors will be excited to see that. Uh, to see that a lot of opacness um, um, in the management of finances is now exposed, and those who are in charge of managing our resources will be on uh, or, or will be uh, put on uh, notice that Nigerians will be looking at to see how they are managing our resources. Then, as it relates to the knock that the government has gotten from the World Bank and uh, Modi, uh, I mean, it should ginger the government into action. I don't think the change in them. Um, uh, the management and the board of Federal Land Revenue Service has anything to do with uh, those knocks. I think we need to go further. Uh, World Bank is asking for some level of uh, structural changes in our financial management or economic management. And they said to us, if we continue to run the economy as, uh, uh, as uh, business as usual, our economy will grow at best at 2.1% in 2020 and 2021. And our population is growing at 2.6%. And we're going to see the incidence of poverty increase further. So for me, we have to ask, what are those structural changes we need to make? Uh, they are not at the level of changing the management of the tax uh, authority. Okay. Uh, Johnson, so as far as the new Open Transparency Financial Reporting Portal is, is concerned, uh, if I supply that uh, Christmas light behind you, uh, shining there uh, in your office, and it's about five million naira, my name will appear on the new portal. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, yeah, the answer is yes, I know. Okay, so, uh, if, so if anyone is supplying Christmas lights, you're doing an uh, end of year party for the government, any amount in excess of 5 million naira will find your name reported and I can just check it out from here. Thank you so much, Johnson Chuku. It's great to have you on the show this morning. The CEO at Career Asset Management and a Public Policy Analyst. We'll come back and look at the commodities marketplace.